Welcome to Supernatural Life. I'm Patricia King. I serve you as your host on today's program. And our topic is on the grace of God. Oh, amazing grace. Mm. How sweet that sound. And with us today, we have Robert Henderson teaching on this subject from your brand new book, um, The Power of God's Grace. Yes. And it's just an awesome uh, uh, topic and a much needed topic yes. in this hour. So just to jump right into it, what is grace and what is it not? <laughs> well, you know, I think that gr grace, obviously, I mean, we've all heard the definition, God's unmerited favor, that kind of thing. I, I tried to actually stay away from that because it, we hear it so much. It's, sure. like, it's like water off the duck's back. But when I think about grace, the, one of the first things I think about is Noah. Because a lot of people don't think that God was gracious in the Old Testament. But he's the same God, sure. whether it's the Old Testament or the New. And the Bible says of Noah that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And I remember reading that one day and I thought, okay, that doesn't mean that God just decided to show Noah grace. It means that Noah was able to see the grace that was in God's eyes. Mm, beautiful. In other words, he saw the way God was looking at him. Oh, beautiful. And grace is the way God looks at us. God, wow. God looks at us in a certain way. And when we, when we discover his gracious gaze at us, see, mm. I, think that that's, I think that that's what broke Peter's heart Aww. whenever he, yeah. when he denied the Lord uh, three times mm. and the rooster crowed and it says the Lord turned and looked at him. The Lord wasn't turning and saying, you, exactly. how dare you do this to me exactly. after all I've done? No, it was his, his eyes were full of grace and it broke Peter's heart because that's mm. what grace does. Yeah. It, actually, it actually brings us to a deep surrender because the Bible says we love him because he, he first, first loved, loved us. us. His love actually transforms us right. uh, into the image that he desires us to be. And to me, that's what grace is. That's, that's awesome. what grace is. And of course, the other thing is, I think that, that some, in my opinion, and today, today uh, there is somewhat of a, a distorted view of what grace is uh, because it's almost like we can live any old way we want to live mm -hmm. and it's okay. But the real grace of God, according to Titus chapter two, it says, mm -hmm. it says the grace has appeared uh, that brings salvation to all men. So this is the grace that teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live godly. We should live righteously in this present yeah, world. Exactly. In other words, real grace will push us to holiness because the grace of God that I received, it won't let me live in my sin. Right. It won't. It won't. It, it, won't. Won't. it, it won't. won't. I'm miserable. Exactly. I, I have to deal with my stuff. Or, it empowers you to go in the other direction, abso actually. Absolutely. But, but it makes you want to. Right. Because it's the very nature of God in absolutely. you. Absolutely. See, God's, uh, His grace brings His nature yeah. uh, into us that makes me want to live the way He wants me to live rather than the way my my flesh would want it's me to so go. good. I did a study on grace, you know, a long time ago, and I was just so blessed by one of the definitions. It's just sort of Strong's Concordance, mm. so it wasn't a deep yeah, study, yeah. but it says that it's God's divine influence upon your heart. Yeah, that's so good. And it's like I remember when I was born again. The night that I was born again, I came to the Lord really broken, like I had nothing to offer Him, mm. and I just felt so dirty and so slimy, and and you know, I saw myself as having an evil sort of thing. So I, I just went to the Lord and I said, I don't even know if you'd want me, but mm -hmm. you know, you know, those people up the street at the Bible study, <laughs> they said that you came in when you asked. So I was just wondering if you could wow. come into me in the same way. He did not hesitate. He came in with so much love. It was like liquid love. But from that moment, my life was influenced. Mm. No one had to tell me even to turn away from sin. Yes. The grace led me in a different direction. Yes. And it was so beautiful. He influenced my life to this day. And we're talking, you know, well over 40 years later, you know, I'm still walking in this amazing influence upon my life. Oh, so and whenever I feel like, you know, wow, I need to understand something more or I need to have the power to do something better. I just say, God, increase your grace. And every time he does it, and I just want you to know that if you have heard anything that says the grace of God will enable you to do whatever you want and it doesn't matter if you sin, that is not grace. People right. who say that have not even, I don't think they've experienced grace That's, that because either. it's just the no, opposite. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I agree. You know, um, I remember years ago, a lady came into my office 
I mean, and and she knew nothing. She knew nothing. She'd been coming to the services. She knew nothing. She came in. She wanted to give her heart to the Lord. I mean, because we talked a little bit. I prayed with her. She was living with a guy in, you know, in sin, not married, whatever, because that's what people right. do. I started, now, because I thought, if I'm going to be a real man of God, I need to tell her, you need to move out. And so I started to tell her, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, don't you tell her that. He said, that's not your business. You leave that to me. Wow. Within le or less than a week later, she calls for another appointment. She comes in and she says, she says, I can't explain why, but I don't feel good about my situation anymore. Exactly. I think I need to move out. Because, see, she received the real grace of God, and it actually pushed her to want to, to, want to live a different life. Wow. And I never told her That's a word. God awesome. actually told me not to. He said, you leave it alone. Because whenever she received the grace of God, it began to put in her a desire to live a holy and life. And the apostle Paul knew about that. He's called the apostle of grace, actually. Yes. But, I mean, he understood the grace that changed him from someone who was bound by religion, could only see through religious vis vision, into a man of God who knew Jesus Christ and who was empowered by Christ to do the works of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And almost every epistle, he started and ended in many too, grace and peace, grace and peace Amen. be multiplied unto yes. you. And it's like he knew the power of growth for an individual. He knew the power of grace. That was the key ingredient. You yes. need the grace and you need the shalom of God in order to grow. And Amen. so he decreed it and proclaimed it. And we need to do that over each other. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I one of the other things I talk about in the book is grace being the generosity of God. Yes. Because in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, the apostle Paul talks about putting into oh, them the it. grace yes. of God that was put, up, put that was put in the Macedonian right. church. And it was actually about them actually giving. Exactly. That when grace came into their life, it released a generosity out of them because they are receiving from the generosity of God. Oh, and, so, and, and so I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, just giving money. Sure. Well, obviously no, no. we should do that. But that, that's, to me, that's not the issue. The issue is it is his generosity toward us. And I cannot be touched by his generosity and, not and it not him. unlock yeah. generosity in me. Yeah. And, and see, to me, that's what happened. Um, I think it's Luke chapter 8 where that the women, all these women that had great substance, mm -hmm. the Bible says, it says there had been demons cast out of them. They'd all experienced deliverance. They'd been healed. They were, they were serving Jesus. They were following and they ministered to him of his substance, of their substance because it, um, his grace in their right. life unlocked a generosity out of their own life. And it even works with service, too. Absolutely. I remember after I got saved that night, I stayed up all night. I just wept. I was so in love. I just couldn't get over mm -hmm. his love, right? I get up in the morning, and I couldn't wait to go give this gospel to others. Wow. And so I went over to my neighbor's house, you know, when they turned on the light, and it was still dark out. I went over and shared the gospel with them. I couldn't wait because of that generosity, because That's so right. much love had been given to me. I just wanted to share it with everyone else. And grace Absolutely. Grace, you know, if you are all dry and, you know, feeling, you know, like you're in kind of a spiritual wilderness, just ask for more grace because his divine influence, his favor, his goodness will come upon you and you'll just start to, to give out of that. It's so amazing. Yes. Yes. You know, the, 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 gra the grace of God is an inexhaustible thing. One of the other things I talk about in the book is that grace is God's grease. And I grew up in a in a farming, you know, um, country type uh, uh, atmosphere. So we we worked on vehicles, cars, right. different things. And I found, you know, what what you discover is unless. There, uh, something is lubricated, one of the gears and the motions of the motor moves, it's going to heat up and it's going to cause friction and it's, you're going to have a breakdown. But the grease actually stops that friction wow. from coming. And so I talk about grace, uh, grace being like grease in our life, that when we've received the grace of God uh, into our lives, it's like Psalms 23, he anoints my head with oil wow. so that there is a lubrication that comes into our life that makes all the stuff that would normally cause things to heat up and actually cause a breakdown, we actually see that not happen oh, because so of beautiful. the grace of God that's coming into our lives. So beautiful. You know, you mentioned generosity a few moments ago, and in the book of Corinthians, 
um, Paul's writing, and he says that all grace may abound to you, yes, right? Yes. So that you will have all sufficiency in everything. That's right. So it's like when God's grace is upon you, you actually receive abundance yes. with that grace, right? Absolutely. Abundance of his goodness, abundance of love, abundance of substance so that you'll have enough to give into every good work, it says. Absolutely. It's just amazing the way grace works. Yes. yes. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's not just barely enough to get by. Right. It's, it's, it's an abundance. He, he come that we might have life and have it more abundant. <laughs> Abundantly. And so many, so many Christians don't live that life because I don't believe, as you're saying, they receive the abundance of grace right. that is ours. Because that's the other thing. There are varying levels of grace. Mm -hmm. And the more we walk with God, the more we will come into those varying and ever-increasing levels of grace well, that are operating in our life. Well, grace is being offered to you right now in great abundance, even greater levels than you've ever known. We're going to talk more about that after this break. It would be my, truly my heart for you um, as our viewers that you would have an acceleration of grace in your life because I know that when you do, when you get more grace, when you get multiplied grace unto your life, is that you'll just have more of Jesus operating. You'll have more of Jesus manifesting in your life and things get so easy and empowered. It's just awesome. So don't ever be afraid to ask God for more grace. In fact, Amen. even when you don't think you need it, just ask for more because he'll lavish you with generous portions of it because he knows how powerful Amen. it is. Yes. But Robert, in your book, you talk about um, the importance of living our faith out by mm -hmm. grace. Yes. Yes. You know, Romans chapter five and verse two, it says we have access by faith into the grace in which we stand. So, I mean, you stop and think about that. Okay, we're already standing in grace, but to get the effects of it, I have to operate in faith. Wow. Um, and and some, sometimes that's just, a, for me, that's just like a shift in my mind. It's amazing how I can shift back into a works mentality in my own mind and spirit and be laboring really hard trying to please God. And invariably when I do that, I start feeling condemned and guilty. And then God has to remind me, just accept by faith, just accept right. by faith the grace I have extended to you, right. the great, my grace that is towards you. And all of a sudden, a new empowerment mm. comes. The guilt and the it. condemnation goes away. And, and, and my faith becomes a joy again. And the joy so of the easy. Lord returns. <laughs> it's so easy. It's so easy. Oh. But, but, my, but my tendency toward works and performance mm -hmm. Uh, makes me have to be reminded of that on a consistent basis. And so anyway, that, that's just kind of a, a little thing there of, of, of just saying, okay, God, I by faith am going to accept the grace of God into it's my life. It's so good. Yeah. And whenever you do, it's true. God is just happy to respond to that act of faith and give you what you need to, to plow through. In the break, we were talking about what Paul said, where God told him after he had sought the Lord three times for the mm -hmm. thorn in the flesh to be removed, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people will interpret that as saying, well, Paul had struggles in his flesh. He had mm -hmm. a sickness or something. And God just says, put up with it and yeah. my grace will <laughs> get you through. But really it's what you just said mm -hmm. uh, because that thorn in the flesh was a legalistic spirit, a religious spirit that was persecuting mm -hmm. Paul wherever he went. And he said, I, I, I'd like to get rid of this, yes. you know. And, and God said, no, my grace is sufficient. That grace will overcome that striving, that Absolutely. religiosity. Grace will win it out. And, and, um, and, and it's so true. And, and you know, in, in that particular scripture, when, in God, when God said, my grace is sufficient for you, uh, I believe that as Paul was contending against all of that, you know, he was very weary of it, I'm sure. sure. But but Hebrews talks about not failing to receive or not failing the grace of God. Okay. In other words, I believe that when we are in places like that of hardship, contention, whatever, at, that, at those moments, there's an abundance of grace we can receive. So that good. there's a lavishing of God's grace. And that grace will actually transform us. I, I love this story. I, it's it. in, it's, I think it's in Exodus 21, where this the story of the, of the, of the servant. It, it was the law of God that if a slave could not pay right. his debt, then he could sell himself, or a Hebrew couldn't pay his debt, he could sell himself into slavery to another Hebrew. And he would work for six years, and on the seventh year, he could go free and have ever, all his debt paid. But if that, that, that slave said, that man said, 
I've come to love my master's house. I don't mm -hmm. want to go free. Because see, what happened was the kindness and the goodness of the master's house had changed his heart. And that's exactly what grace does. So good. We it come does. to Jesus. I came to Jesus so I wouldn't go to hell. Right. But <laughs> as I have walked with Jesus, the kindness, the goodness mm -hmm. of who Jesus is changes my heart. Oh, so that now constantly. I serve him. <laughs> now I serve him because I love him. Right. Not because I'm trying to escape hell. I thank him for, for that, that, I, I, that I'm going right. to heaven and not hell. But, but I don't serve him for that. I serve him because he's so kind and, and because he's so good. A and, lot of times people struggle, right, with exactly what you're saying because they'll try, okay, I've got to really try hard. I've got to obey the law. I've got to, you know, mind mm -hmm. my P's and Q's. I've got to really <laughs> work at this. But the thing is, if you, if you just turn away from that kind of mentality and striving and mm -hmm. fear mm -hmm. and just say, God, just pour out your grace, you'll find it's so easy to walk in Amen. the things that delight the Lord because grace and God's delight is all congruent and you just find yourself Absolutely. in the flow of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I love uh, what Peter said, First Peter chapter 1, where he said, he said, the grace that shall be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, I know that that's ultimately talking about Jesus coming and that we're going to, and, and people think, oh, I'm so afraid of Jesus coming. Well, guess what? The Bible says <laughs> yeah. there's going to be great grace that's going to come. Yeah. But the principle is the more revelation I have of who Jesus is, the more grace it releases yeah. in my life. I can and, hardly wait for him to come. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> but but even now, as I as I come to new revelations, as I spend time with him, as I walk in intimacy with him, revelation comes. That releases new portions I of grace it. to me. New portions it. of grace that begin to flow in my life. How do you fall from grace? That's an interesting question because that's actually talking about not losing your salvation. That's actually talking about going back under the law in, in Galatians right. where it talks about falling from grace. So what it means is that we begin to trust in our own efforts again. Uh, we, began to, we began to think, I've got to do something to earn something from God. And we can never earn anything from God. What a and, drag, right? Yeah, Having really. <laughs> that, and, and now, <laughs> I, love, I love Matthew chapter 20, the parable mm -hmm. of, the, of the vineyard where, where that uh, those who worked, you know, the, the, the owner went out and hired different groups at different parts of the day. The first group agreed. Okay, that was the Jews. They had a contract with God. They had the law. Every other group went on the basis of whatever is right. That's those that were under, the, under grace. Wow. And so the whole issue there is that when we serve him out of grace, the Bible says that the last, the one that, that worked only one hour, got as much as the one that worked all day mm. long, that the, that the rewards of serving God out of grace mm. will far outweigh any efforts oh, in, of it. performance we could ever walk in before Him, that grace is greatly rewarded when we trust the Lord. Oh, I love it. Doesn't this bring refreshment to you? You might want to just examine your life right now and say, is there any area that I'm really striving in because I need to just cast that onto the Lord and receive grace and just and just follow him because I love him? I remember being on a mission field uh, one time where, you know, I was I, I just got into the deception, I think, of, of, of self-striving. <laughs> I lost all my joy. And this and this girl came around on the outreach and she said, I serve the Lord because I love him, not because I have to. And it just like, whoa, <laughs> that is so good. This have to stuff That's has right. to go. Yeah. And I just want to encourage you to let all that, I have to do this, and I have to do that. Let that go and say, I get to do this because under grace, I get to do it. And God is going to lavish me with his favor, with his power, with his divine influence to make it happen. Yeah. We're going to take a break right now, and we will be right back. Well, welcome back, and we're doing this amazing program on the amazing grace of God, and we have with us Robert Henderson. And Robert, we have some um, questions from viewers right now um, that I'm going to ask you if okay. you want to speak into it. It says, as a child, I was raised strict holiness, and I still know many people locked in legalism. How can I effectively help them find grace? Yeah. Um I think that we can give them principles, but I think the Holy Spirit 
has to be the one that actually begins to bring bring revelation. I myself grew up in a very strict uh, denominational church. Uh, some would even say almost cult, cult-like. But but so I had a very strong performance mentality that if I serve God well. He accepted me. If I didn't, then he didn't accept me. And I'll never forget being in a time of prayer one time, just by myself. And the Lord began to speak to, to, speak to me about his covenant love. Mm. And he just began to show me, you can never do anything that would cause me not to love you. And he began to secure me in his love. But it was, it was a revelation um, of the Holy Spirit. So I would say, give them the principles. Give right. them the, the book. All these kind of things. But... Pray for them that their minds would be enlightened yeah. so that so that the Spirit of God can help them understand just how That's much so God good. loves them. Yeah. That's like Paul's prayer, right? He said, uh, I pray that a spirit of wisdom and revelation yes. and the knowledge of Jesus Christ would come. And like it has to be, it, it has to come as light to their own heart um, because they can't share your revelation. They need their own. So pray for that revelation and God will give it to them. I know that's a prayer yeah. he wants to answer. I have a friend actually who was raised in a similar uh, background as this and um, uh, very strict, uh, very strict denomination. And every Sunday, practically, they were at the altar feeling so much shame and guilt and uh, Mm -hmm. I'm a bad person. And she wasn't until she was in her 50s Mm. when she actually got a revelation of the love of God, the unconditional love of God, the grace of God, but it transformed her. And If you feel, I've got so many years I've wasted, I just want you to know that God's a redeemer of the time. Yes. And what she says is what she came into, it was almost like her whole life she'd known that revelation. So that's cool, isn't it? Absolutely. No remorse, just, wow, I've got it now. I'm going to enjoy (laughs) every minute of it. Okay, here's another question. And this is a little bit maybe harder to okay. answer. A friend of mine went into something called universalism. Mm-hmm. So you might want to explain what that is. And is trying to get me to believe, but something feels wrong. What is it? And should I be concerned? Yeah. Well, my understanding of universalism is that basically um, everyone, everyone's going to be saved. Everyone's okay. You know, uh, that kind of thing. And that's not true. That's not true. I mean, if that was true, then there would no, be no real reason for Jesus to come and die on the cross and all these kind of things. That there has to be a personal decision that someone makes that says, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I ask him to come into my heart, forgive me of my sins. You know, there has there has to be that that decision and that commitment uh, that is that is made to him and, and, and right. brought to him. Uh, it's not like we can, by osmosis, be absorbed. Sure. In, into something. there, I believe there has to be a clear decision, That's a really, clear choice that really is made. Uh, I remember again about the uh, about the man that chose to be the bond slave. He, he, the Bible says he clearly said, he clearly said, I don't want to go out. I want to stay in this house. And they would d- drill his ear through mm-hmm. with, with all. They would mark him uh, with a mark that said he belonged to that house. Right. He belonged to that master. And he was treated like a son. And he was treated that. like yeah. a son from that point it's on. It's so, so beautiful. Absolutely. So, so uh, the reason this person, I think, would be feeling reluctant or, or having this reservation is because it's the Holy Spirit in them sure. saying, this isn't right. This is not correct. That's a deception. I remember, right. I remember years ago, I was listening to a radio program, turned it on in the middle of a program. Program. And um, and it all sounded good. All the words sounded right. All the even the theology sounded right. But in my in my spirit, I thought there's something not right here. There's something not right here. And when it went off, it was the Worldwide Church of God, wow. which which we, we would say would was greatly in there in cult. Right? Yeah, yeah it was in that time. And and I then I thought, well, that's I, and I learned something. I thought the Holy Spirit, even when the words sound right. They sound convincing. Pay attention to what your spirit is saying. Right. Because because his spirit will bear witness with our spirit. And I think that's part of the grace of God, too, because it says the grace of God teaches you to yes. live godly, to deny ungodliness. So you've got this little little knower on the inside. That's right. Like when error is spoken, your grace metron says, I don't think so. That's- that doesn't quite fit there. But it's interesting that when, when both John the Baptist and Jesus when they were preaching, it was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at Amen. hand. So that doesn't just include 
everyone is marked, you have to actually turn to God. Yes. And the grace of God enables you to do that. So I think we need to pray for a lot of people that are involved in cults. Pray for the truth, the spirit of truth to yes. come. And Jesus came in grace and truth. Amen. And so let's pray for that for Amen. them. Well, would you be able to pray for an impartation Absolutely. of grace or an increase of grace upon our Amen. viewers? Amen. Amen. So Father, I just want to pray for all that are watching today. I want to thank you for your grace that is abundant, that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, and that your grace, Lord, has already been released to us, and that we, by faith, put ourselves in the right posture to receive of the abundance of your grace, Lord. And if any that are watching feel like there's something uh, not correct, not right, they're lacking something, I just declare more grace to them in the name of Jesus and that your purposes would be done and would be served in their life, not out of their own strength, but out of the grace of God that's within them, that even as the Apostle Paul said, it's not I, but the grace of God that's in me. In Jesus' amen. name, amen. Thank you Amen. so much, Robert. And I just want to encourage you all to get Robert Henderson's new book, Operating in the Power of God's Grace. And it would be a great book to give to people who don't know the Lord, but also to those who might be having a wrong understanding of grace. Okay, so these are helps for you. Thank you so much for joining us on today's program. Remember that you've been called by Jesus to live a supernatural life. So go out and spread his love into the world that you live in. And we'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your feedback, testimony, or prayer request today. Or ask Patricia a question for a future program. And don't forget, you can continue growing in the supernatural with our premium e-courses. Connect with us at god.tv forward slash Patricia. And join us next time for our next episode of Supernatural Life.